weathering. This rock is smaller, but it looks like the same type of rock as this mountain. Weathering happens over time. It's a process. Weathering can break large rocks into small rocks. Weathering breaks smaller rocks down further into soil, sand, or even tiny particles called sediment. But what causes weathering? Water, ice, wind, plants, heating and cooling. All of these things affect the earth and play a part in breaking rocks down into smaller pieces. They are the causes or agents of weathering. water. Some of these agents can cause change physically. That is just by the force of contacting the rock. Water in all its forms is the most powerful agent. The physical force of water and ice can break rocks and wear away their surfaces. When water freezes in cracks in rocks, it expands. It gets bigger. The force of expanding water is so great, it can actually split rock apart. You might have discovered this yourself if you've ever frozen a water bottle to take to school. That bottle is full of water, all the way to the top. It's standing nicely in the freezer. You think, I can put it on my desk tomorrow and let it melt. I'll have cold water all day long. The next morning, though, what's happened? The bottle won't stand up. The frozen water has gotten bigger. It has expanded and pushed out the bottom of the bottle. It's no longer flat. The freezing action of water can expand the cracks in rocks and break them up. The flowing action of water can weather rock too. It slowly wears the surface of rocks away. This stream bottom has been worn smooth. And when water flows over rocks, it not only causes a physical change, it can cause a change inside the rock to the different materials that make up the rock. This is called a chemical change. Let's see what water with a little vinegar, a weak acid from plants, can do to this soft rock called soapstone. After just a few minutes, you can begin to see particles in the water. Let's wait just a little longer. Now look, parts of this soft rock have dissolved. Why did some of the rock wash away here and some of it stay there? Water caused a chemical change. It was able to dissolve some of the material in the rock, while other parts did not dissolve. We saw how water can get into cracks in rocks, freeze, expand, and break rocks down. The same thing can happen with plants. Plants. Plants can grow in cracks in rocks. As the plant grows, the roots of the plant grow too, making the crack bigger and bigger until... Wind. 
This landform in Utah may have been smooth at one time. Desert winds carrying sand have weathered this surface. These workmen are getting ready to paint this truck. They are using this machine that blows air and sand to blast away the old paint. It's called a sand blaster. Look what sand and wind can do to a soft surface like wood in just a few minutes. Just like that sand blaster, over time, wind can weather away the surface of landforms, changing the way they look. Temperature. The wind isn't blowing on this rock in the sun, but this rock is still weathering. It's getting warmer now, and some of the materials in the rock are expanding quickly with the heat. Other materials in the same rock are expanding slowly. When the sun goes down, they'll contract or get smaller at different speeds too. This expansion and contraction is all smaller than we can see with our own eyes, but over time, it is enough to slowly break the rock down. So temperature changes can also cause weathering. But after weathering breaks up rock, what happens to it? Erosion. Erosion is the movement of weathered rocks and soil. In erosion, pieces of the Earth's crust are picked up and carried away. But how does this happen? Wind, flowing water, waves, ice, and gravity are all the agents of erosion. Gravity. Gravity is the force that pulls everything on Earth toward the center of the Earth. Objects roll downhill, <laughs> even living objects. Take a big rock that's been broken off from a mountain, like this boulder. As the boulder is pulled downhill by gravity, it picks up speed, breaking up rocks, plants, everything in its path. It even breaks up more of itself. That happened quickly, but some erosion happens constantly, even when we do not see it. This fence on the side of the hill was straight when it was built. Over the years, a slow form of erosion by gravity called creep has pulled the soil downhill, causing the fence to move downhill too. Rock slides are caused by gravity. Smaller particles like soil can be moved by gravity quickly, too, especially when they are mixed with another agent of erosion like water. This mudslide in Northern California destroyed houses and covered a freeway. Gravity is always working with the other agents of erosion, changing the surface of the Earth. Ice. Erosion can also be caused by moving ice, like glaciers. Today, you can find glaciers in places where snow builds up and it's cold all year. The snow never melts. The weight of the snow and the force of gravity cause these layers of ice to creep or flow downhill. This boulder in the glacier is being eroded day by day. It's being dragged along with the glacial flow, approximately 30 centimeters, or one foot, a day. As it moves, the ice scrapes over the earth, carrying other rocks and soil along with it. Years from now, it may get to this Alaskan bay. Many of the landforms we are familiar with, like 
Cape Cod, Long Island, and the U-shaped Yosemite Valley were formed by glaciers thousands of years ago. Wow, a glacier scraped over the Earth's crust. Gouging out bedrock here, and piling up rock there. Wind. The wind is blowing over this sandy desert. You can see ripples in the sand, similar to the ripples you see in water when it is moved. In wind erosion, particles of sand are picked up and moved by the wind. When the wind slows, they will be dropped. Over time, they may form huge piles of sand called sand dunes. On another day, the wind may pick up the sand on this dune and move it to form a dune at a new location. When wind does this in farmland, the effect can be very destructive. In the 1930s, there was a drought in the middle of the country. No rain fell and the soil dried up. Wind picked up the precious topsoil needed to grow crops and destroyed many family farms. Over the years, sand carried on the wind may have eroded away whole mountains, leaving behind these bizarre-shaped landforms called outliers that are wearing away more day by day. As dramatic as these changes may be, the agent of erosion that causes the greatest change is running water. Water. From the moment water touches the earth, it moves it. We can see this if we look at raindrops on sand. Each drop of water moved some sand. Running water can drop particles in places miles and miles away from where they were picked up. Can you imagine the amount of weathered rock moved by this storm or in this waterfall? You can see this at the ocean with each pounding wave. They can break up rocks and shells into smaller pieces. Waves are constantly carrying these materials, along with your favorite sand castles, out to sea. Who knows what new shore they may wash up on? Deposition. Deposition is the dropping off, the depositing of eroded rock. The slow, steady work of deposition is constantly building up, changing the surface of the earth. The wind may erode one sand dune away, but that sand is deposited in a new location, and a new sand dune is formed. Deposition is building up new landforms every day. Rocks soil, sediment, anything that the flowing water of a river can move is picked up and carried along, sometimes as far as the mouth of the river, where it empties out into another body of water. All the materials eroded by the flowing river can build up at the mouth. These materials have formed a delta. Some deltas are muddy and unstable, Others have become so big that crops are grown on them. Today, parts of the delta at the mouth of the Mississippi River is growing bigger. It's actually pushing out farther into the Gulf of Mexico. Discover more about our Earth. Call one 800